Hi, this is Tim the Analyst at btsvalidation.com. Today we're going to go over the five easy hacks of operational qualifications. That's the OQ. And you're going to learn some cool stuff. So let's dig in. First, as always, with all my videos, always consult your quality and regulatory compliance department before you do validations. They can give you really, really good facts before you begin. So let's start. Number five, always understand what you're testing. I know, can't stress how important that is. You always need to find an expert, a process expert, a key user that uses that software day in, day out. You need to have that level of insight before you start operational qualifications. Next, get requirements. Oh my gosh, requirements are amazingly important. Always get requirements. And then try to take those requirements and write them down, right? Don't just arbitrarily put it in a document or forget it or have it on a Kanban board but not have it on the document. Write down the requirements that you're testing for. If you don't have requirements, what are you testing, right? Next, determine the risk. I mean, really that's important, right? Work with your quality or compliance uh, department and determine what the risk of each of these requirements are versus the OQ that you're creating, right? They'll give you guidance, but you need to really, really sit down and have a meeting just discussing risk and maybe came, come in with one or two more requirements that you didn't think about. So always bring in a little bit larger of a team, review the risks, and then make a determination if you have to add test lines. So number two, signature timelines and dates. I mean, you need to have that on each test line, right? Don't just create one huge document and at the end, just sign it. Because what's gonna happen, the auditor's gonna say, when do you take this test? Well, the ECO says back in 2018, I took it on the CCO day. Well, most likely you didn't. And sometimes OQ can actually take a day or two to complete. So you need to have an idea of who did the test and when he or she did it. Those are really handy at the test line level that you saying, I'm acknowledging I did the work or I did the test. So you're acknowledging that you did the test and when you did it. Don't start from scratch. This is the single number one thing. Don't always start from, you know, opening up a Word document going, hmm, okay, I guess I'm gonna need a header here. I'm gonna need, um, oh, a title here. Don't, don't always do that. Either get a template from your regulatory or your quality system, which probably already has a template, or do like a lot of people are, start using automation. BTS Validation has a system that can help you do the IQ, OQ, and PQ and help connect these requirements and also make sure you have initials and signatures where required. And that's beautiful because they're electronic. And then you reduce the process that may take days to perform into minutes. And always make sure any document you have, whether it's a Word document, or it's an automated tool like BTS Validation. Make sure you have a test report and make sure it has requirements at the test line level that tells you if something passed or failed and ultimately what the end result was. As always, if you have any problems, reach out to us at our website at www.btsvalidation.com or help at btsvalidation.com. That's our email account. Drop us a line. Sometimes maybe you need some help. Sometimes you may need an independent software validator or you want to use our tool and make your life simple, hey, that's good. Have a nice day.